The Superb has long been the standard bearer for Skoda's model lineup, but it gained a fresh lease of life in this more sophisticated third generation guise and has further been improved in the form we look at here. This enhanced design looks sharper inside and out, and the brand now offers a plug-in hybrid option for the first time too. Plus, the pricing remains sensible, there are extra high-tech driving aids, and there's still a class-leadingly spacious cabin, along with an absolutely huge boot in both hatch and estate variants. The result is a very complete package that should prove likeable to live with. As Skoda points out, you'll probably end up spending several years of your life in a car, Important then, to choose the right one. If customer satisfaction surveys are to be believed, few superb buyers ever doubt that they've done just that. The Skoda Superb. Executive style space, family style pricing. That's what you expect. And that's what this third generation model has always delivered ever since its 2015 launch. All it really needed was a bit of extra want one factor, which this facelifted version aims to provide. The name Superb smacks of self-aggrandizement, doesn't it? But it's actually an important nameplate for Skoda. Dating back to 1934 and an original design that established this Czech maker's forward-thinking automotive credentials. Amongst other things, this pre-war model showcased overhead valve engines, hydraulic brakes and a four-speed gearbox technology that was cutting edge for its time. And in the pre- and post-war period, five different superb models were produced, including a limousine and a convertible, as well as the staple saloon, as part of a production run which lasted until 1949. All were gracefully styled too, justifying a name borrowed from the Latin superbus, meaning proud or stately. It would be a long time before the brand would bring us another superb badged model, this car that would again truly justify that terminology. The conservatively shaped first and second generation modern era superb models we saw in 2001 and 2008 certainly didn't. The first of these, the B5 series Mark I based on stretched Volkswagen Passat underpinnings was prompted by an initial request from Czech president Milos Zeman, who'd come to Skoda wanting a large luxury saloon, having been embarrassed by the previous need to use German cars for his official duties. Surprisingly successful. This design justified development of a Mark II B6 series version that featured much more Czech DNA, based on a platform stretched from the brand's cheaper Octavia model. With that Mark II variant, buyers got an estate derivative too, as well as a five-door version offering a clever twin-door rear liftback arrangement, giving the look of a saloon but the versatility of a hatchback. In both cases, the market's medium-range Mondeo D segment got a brilliantly spacious, excellent value contender, but one that in styling terms was dowdy and dull, the kind of car your dad would choose. The safe Comfort oriented handling suited that perception too. It all meant that when it came to this third generation B8 series design, which as we said earlier was initially launched in 2015, it simply wasn't going to be enough for Skoda to once more bring us something big, sensible and decently priced. This car needed a more dynamic feel, a dose of technology and, most of all, a sense of style. In short, it needed to justify its name. To a great extent, that's what we got from a car whose handling and running cost efficiency was immeasurably improved by the adoption of the Volkswagen Group's stiffer, lighter MQB platform. As a result, over 530,000 liftback and estate examples of this third generation model were sold in its first four years of production, though only 17% of these reached private buyers, the remainder taken by fleets and taxi companies. 
Going forward, Skoda would like a few more individuals to consider a superb, and the company's very aware of the continuing threat that D-segment Mondeo market medium-range contenders like this face from family-sized crossovers, like the Czech brand's own Karok and Kodiak SUVs. Hence the need for the improvements made here to considerably enhance this Superb's showroom appeal. Apart from the slightly smarter look, there's lots of change beneath the bonnet with two fresh volume engines, a 1.5 TSI petrol and a new Evo series 2 litre TDI 150 PS diesel. Plus, there's Skoda's first electrified model, the superb IV plug-in hybrid. Add in new safety and convenience systems and a bit of extra so-called simply clever design, and all the ingredients would seem to be in place for a more promising proposition, particularly as this car is still unequaled in its sector in terms of rear passenger space and luggage capacity. Time to put it to the test. The days are long gone when a superb tackled twisting roads with all the agility of a cross-channel ferry. The installation of a stiff, sophisticated Volkswagen Group MQB platform into this third generation model in 2015 delivered a level of handling prowess broadly comparable with its close cousin, the Volkswagen Passat. Which means that though this Skoda remains very much comfort orientated, it's these days surprisingly capable, should the need arise for you to push it along a bit. There are no chassis or suspension changes with this revised B8 model, but quite a lot's different under the bonnet, as you would expect would be the case, given that a whole new generation of Volkswagen Group engines have been introduced since this Mark III Superb was first launched. Most come paired up with a 7-speed DSG auto transmission, and if you avoid the two least expensive trim options, you'll get a drive mode selection system with normal sport and eco options that alter throttle response, steering feel and gear shift timings. Plus, there's an individual option that allows you to configure customised settings. There are several headlines on the engine front with this revised car, the most eye-catching one being the introduction of Skoda's first electrified model, the superb IV petrol plug-in hybrid, which is expected to account for up to 30% of sales. We'll get to that, but of arguably greater importance in terms of sales is the new Evo series 2 litre 150 PS diesel engine, which, despite the dwindling importance of black pump fueled variants, is still likely to be the best seller and is offered with either manual or auto transmission. Though the output of this mid-range TDI unit is the same as before, this power plant's had a thorough redesign which has brought new exhaust, turbo, fuel injection and thermos management systems. As you'd gather from that, the changes made are orientated towards efficiency. So the performance figures rest to 62 miles an hour in 9.1 seconds on the way to a top speed of 137 miles an hour are much the same as those of the earlier version of this EA288 series engine. You'll get exactly the same performance stats from the other mainstream underbonnet offering, this one growing in popularity, the 1.5 TSI petrol power plant, which also offers 150 PS and is also available with either a manual or an auto box. We're actually a little surprised to see this engine featuring here, since it can't be had with the Volkswagen Group's mild hybrid technology. Audi, for its D-segment model, the A4, passes this unit over in favour of the conglomerate's alternative 150 PS 2-litre petrol power plant for exactly that reason. Either through choice or necessity, Skoda hasn't done that, but the 12-volt mild hybrid tech didn't seem to make much difference to the Audi A4 35 TFSI model we looked at recently, so it's probably no great loss. The 1.5 TSI is a willing, revvy little unit that seems to have no great issue in moving one and a half tonnes of Superb along with reasonable vigour. Like the 1.4 TSI engine it replaces in this Superb, it features active cylinder technology that under light throttle loads cuts off the second and third cylinders for greater efficiency. 
That's old 1.4 TSI unit actually continues on in the range, but only as part of the complicated electrified powertrain borrowed from the Volkswagen Passat GTE that features in the superb IV plug-in hybrid model we mentioned. Here, that relatively old engine and an equally old tech six-speed DSG gearbox is wedded to a very modern slice of electrification, namely an 85 kilowatt electric motor, which boosts total system output to 218 PS and a 13 kilowatt hour battery, which when fully charged, can provide up to 35 miles of all electric WLTP rated driving range. According to circumstance, this setup swaps between electric and petrol or seamlessly combines them. And you can drive this part electric variant in either a frugal hybrid setting or a press on sport mode. The latter enabling a potential 62 mile an hour sprint time of 7.8 seconds en route to 138 miles per hour. For completion, we'll brief you on the other engine options in the range. Two more petrols and two more diesels, all of them more minority interest and all of them only available with seven-speed DSG auto gearbox. If frugality is everything and you can't stretch to the plug-in hybrid, you'll be drawn to the base 1.6 TDI 120 PS diesel model, though its performance will feel distinctly leisurely. The official figures are rest to 62 miles an hour in 11.1 seconds on the way to 127 miles an hour. There are also a couple of 190 PS variants, one a 2 litre TSI petrol, the stats for which are 7.7 .7 seconds and 148 miles an hour, and the car we're trying here, the 2 litre TDI 190 PS diesel. This is the older non-Evo generation unit, which will probably be the choice of towers. First, because it develops a lusty 400 newton meters of torque, and second, because it can be ordered with the option of all-wheel drive, in which form it can tug along up to 2.2 tonnes. All-wheel drive is mandatory for the rare flagship engine in the range, the 272 PS version of the 2.0-litre TSI petrol unit, which creates one of the world's most understated performance models. In this variant, the 62-mile-an-hour sprint is dispatched in just 5.5 seconds, and were it not for a 155-mile-an-hour speed limiter, the car would certainly manage 160 to 170-mile-an-hour autobahn speeds. Yes, in a Skoda! Before we finish here, we'll take the opportunity to embellish a little on a couple of the things touched upon at the beginning of this section. We mentioned that this car was distinctly comfort orientated, which is exactly as typical superb owners want it. And rightly so, given that Britain's roads are the worst in Western Europe. In our experience, the only continental nation with worse paved services is the Czech Republic. So perhaps it's not surprising that this Czech maker is so good at producing cars that ride beautifully here. Over large wheels with stiff suspension that produces a supposedly sporty drive sound great on paper, but can be a misery to live with day in, day out. The Superb, in contrast, dispenses with all this nonsense and offers up wonderfully supple suspension that long-distance drivers will really enjoy in this car, provided they avoid the largest 19-inch wheel size, which compromises things slightly. The Ritzy Sportline Plus variant has to have rims of this size, so for this version, Skoda offers its DCC, or Dynamic Chassis Control System, a setup that's standard with the priciest Lorin and Clement trim level, and one which works via the drive mode selection settings we mentioned earlier. We also mentioned that this car was capable of lifting up its skirts a bit and pressing on through the bends if the need arose to do so, something the first and second generation B5 and B6 super models certainly couldn't do with any real credibility. The adoption with this B8 series car of that more sophisticated MQB platform isn't the only reason for this. There's also a standard XDS plus electronic differential lock that reduces understeer and improves stability as you turn. When you do, you might wish for a little more feel through the wheel, though that's less of an issue with that more dynamic Sport Line Plus trim level, which includes a progressive steering system that gives the helm a more direct feel at speed through the turns. Steering wheel paddle shifters for the seven-speed DSG auto gearbox you get on most models are missing, unless you opt for really pricey spec, but you won't need them. 
this isn't really that kind of car. It only remains to mention that this revised Mark III model Superb feels a degree more sophisticated to drive than it did in its original form, thanks to a bit of extra tech. The virtual cockpit digital instrument binnacle display that features on plusher models and fresh camera-driven driver assistance features like predictive cruise control, which can use GPS data to adjust your speed for upcoming bends and local limits, and an emergency assist setup which can take over driving duties completely should you become incapacitated, steering the car to the side of the road and bringing it to a safe and gradual stop. A typical superb driver would appreciate that feature and we think they'll very much appreciate the changes made to this updated third generation Model 2. It seems a long time ago now that the Superb was a dull, dowdy thing. The look of this third generation B8 series model evolved from designer Josef Caban's futuristic Vision C concept car of 2014 and the brand's current head of styling, Carl Newhold, has subtly updated the front and rear finishing to keep this Skoda feeling current. As before, clean cut lines, smoothly shaped surfaces and sharp edges dominate. And if you like it, you'll find it difficult to understand why so many family buyers at this price point opt for a mid-sized SUV instead. So, let's get to the changes made here. At the front, the radiator grille gets a bit of extra presence thanks to these double slats. And just below it is a more prominent bumper framing a revised lower fascia section with wider, slimmer fog lamps at each corner. To suit the current trend, the headlights are now of the full LED variety. And plusher variants like this one feature more advanced matrix LED lighting, which generates a beam consisting of several segments, each of which are controlled individually. As before, a prominent ridge flows down the bonnet, showcasing the brand badge on the nose, helping to create a car with real overtaking presence. In profile, you better appreciate the elegant silhouette. Only Mercedes is as good as this at creating a style that works as well for the taxi trade as it does outside a stately home. This side perspective emphasises the flowing shape of the extended roof line and the length of this design. It's virtually as long as a BMW 5 Series from the next class up, with this hatch version being actually 7mm lengthier than the alternative estate variant. Either way, the styling's characterised by these two sharp, chiselled swage lines, a lower one just above an indented crease at sill level, and this higher, more powerful shoulder line with a raised edge that flows powerfully back from the front wheel arch just above the door handles. Two fresh colours have been introduced to the range, race blue and crystal black, and the wheels have been restyled. Rim sizes ranging from 16 inches right up to the 19 inch alloys we have here. Let's move to the rear, where it's a bit easier to identify the changes marking out the updated version of this Mark III model. This thin chrome bar runs along the full width of the car, bisecting the full LED tail lamp clusters at either end. And just above it, the previous round brand badge has been replaced with spaced out lettering. Of course, as usual, what's important is the stuff you can't see. In this case, the MQB modular transverse matrix underpinnings that at the launch of this B8 series Superb in 2015 reduced the curb weight by 75 kilos and improved torsional stiffness by 13%. Time to take a seat behind the wheel, but pausing as you enter to admire a signature superb touch, an umbrella that sits in its own waterproof compartment built into the door frame. Now, providing you avoid entry level trim, it's a standard feature, and if you want, you can have umbrellas fitted in both front doors. As the door closes with a reassuring thunk and you take a seat inside, you find yourself in a clean, classy cabin that's simply styled and now lightly embellished with chrome highlights on the door handles and ambient lighting on the dashboard. Now, this may not be quite a Mercedes S-Class for the masses, 
but it's still very nicely finished indeed. There's a standard of design and quality that matches that of this car's cousin, the eighth generation Volkswagen Passat. No mean feat. And that's even before you start to embellish it with supple leather, contrast stitching and a portfolio of decorative inserts. You're unlikely to experience the key cabin change with this revised model unless you pay extra. This 10.25 inch virtual cockpit instrument binnacle screen is standard only with the priciest Lauren and Clement trim level. You'll probably be quite tempted to pay the £465 extra that Skoda wants for it though because thanks to borrowed Audi technology it's one of the better digital displays out there. Clicking on this steering wheel view button, you can change between twin or single virtual dials, an option with digital readings on range and speed, or an expanded centre section with or without flanking tabs. This latter layout can be customised to show a full width navigation map, and with Sportline Plus trim, there's a special sport setting too. Another more subtle change is the standardisation across the range of a touchscreen in the centre of the fascia, no smaller than eight inches in size. The five or six and a half inch monitors that previously featured with cheaper trim levels having now been abandoned. Three setups feature across the model lineup, all of them with Skoda's Smart Link, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring. Less welcome is the fact that none of these screen options give you the more tactile rotary dials used by Audis and top Volkswagens. Anyway, a Bolero package kicks things off, but most superb buyers prefer the mid-range Amundsen system with its integrated navigation and Wi-Fi. Top Lauren and Clement trim gets you the Ritzia Columbus package we've got here, which uses a larger 9.2-inch screen and adds an 11-speaker Canton sound system and a DVD player, as well as gesture and voice control. The Amundsen and Columbus screens work with a downloadable media command app that can allow passengers with a smartphone or a tablet to access the display from anywhere in the car. So the kids can link their own handsets and annoy you by turning their Spotify selections up far too loud. With these two top infotainment packages, you can also really get into the advanced Skoda Connect connectivity that the brand these days offers through its optional infotainment online and care connect packages. Infotainment online gives you online traffic information and can update you on things like fuel prices, parking spaces, current news and weather. Care Connect, meanwhile, will allow you to monitor your car from your smartphone via a Skoda Connect app. Plus, the setup includes a breakdown call function and will automatically alert the emergency services if the airbags go off in an accident. Enough on media stuff. What else might you need to know about this cabin? Well, as ever, with a Skoda, we like the brand's so-called Simply Clever touches. The umbrella holder we referenced earlier is one of them, and there are plenty of others. Take these neat little seat-side pockets, or the way that you can cool not only the glove box, but this spacious centre armrest compartment too, to keep drinks and sweets cool. Then dispose of the litter afterwards in an optional waste bin built into the door panel. Then there's this clever one-handed cup holder below the gear stick that removes the need for the driver to take both hands off the wheel to unscrew a bottle top. By integrating an ultra-grippy rubber base to the cup holder, unscrewing even the tightest of bottle tops becomes easy. There are plenty of more conventional cabin storage features too. Decently sized flock lined door bins incorporate holders big enough to take a 1.5 litre bottle. There's a lidded compartment ahead of the gear stick with a 12 volt socket and a USB port. You get a storage cubby by the driver's right knee and Skoda hasn't forgotten to add an overhead sunglasses compartment. The glove box and central storage bin between the seats that we just mentioned are both of a decent size, the latter featuring an interior USB port and a classily stitched ratcheting top you can adjust to the perfect position for your elbow. Plus, there's a ticket clip on the windscreen and another in the driver's sun visor. What else? Well, the seats are very comfortable and will feature lumbar support, providing you avoid entry-level trim. And build quality is pretty faultless. It's certainly the equal of what you'd find in a premium brand model. And you could almost say the same about the quality of the trimming materials used. Skoda's resisted the temptation to use too much of the kind of shiny piano black inlays that easily smudge and scratch. This grained finish works much better. 
True, there are some firmer plastics around the cabin's lower reaches, but all the surfaces you actually see and touch have a real quality feel. They surround controls that work with a quality click, particularly the stalks you'll find behind this three-spoke leather-stitched multifunction steering wheel. It's also hard to fault the ergonomics, though some testers found that the wheel could obscure the top of the instrument cluster unless it was adjusted to a point that was higher than felt natural. There's also the issue that rearward vision is slightly compromised by this car's high window line and the fact that the thick rear pillars restrict your over-the-shoulder view. Fortunately, all-round parking sensors are standard fit, provided you avoid entry-level trim. The front view is less compromised thanks to slim A-pillars and there are usefully large mirrors too. Let's take a seat in the back. Now, you'll expect a lot here from a Superb if we tell you that the only car in the whole of the Volkswagen Group portfolio with more rear seat legroom is an Audi A8 long wheelbase limousine. And sure enough, there really is a limousine-like feel to the way that once inside, you can stretch out back here. Most other family vehicles require you to slot your feet beneath the seat in front. But in a Superb, that may not be necessary if you aren't particularly tall. Elbow room was improved as part of the design changes which created this third generation model, making it easier to comfortably transport three adults over long distances than it would be in any other car in this sector, despite the prominence of this centre transmission tunnel. There's plenty of headroom too. You could wear a stovepipe hat in here if the mood so took you. Two travellers get the use of a central armrest with integrated pop-out cup holders and you can specify an optional attachment onto which a tablet can be clipped. If we were being picky, we'd reference the fact that the door cards are rather unimaginatively trimmed, and we wonder why Skoda hasn't offered rear-seated folk a USB port. A less useful 12-volt socket resides in this pull-out compartment above the transmission tunnel. Still, otherwise, all the practical touches you'd want feature here. Seat back pockets, decently sized door bins, overhead reading lights, rear climate controls with twin vents, and no fewer than four coat hooks. Side window blinds are optional, as is a panoramic sunroof. And out back, well, let's take a look. Pausing as we go to note another simply clever touch, the ice scraper that's built neatly into the fuel filler cap. Another convenience feature can be found in the optional electric operation available for the tailgate, a setup that can also be specified with what Skoda calls a virtual pedal, allowing you to activate the voter system by waving your foot beneath the bumper should you be approaching your car laden down with shopping. And you can adjust the open tailgate aperture to suit your needs too, taking account perhaps of the height of your garage ceiling. This is a conventional tailgate, and we only mention that because some superb buyers might remember the clever twin-door system used on the old Mark II B6 generation model that allowed the tailgate to open in two different ways, either as a hatch or a boot lid. Owners complained that this setup was heavy, and the Czech brand found it costly to make. So here instead, we've got a more straightforward rear door that rises to reveal what remains Easily the largest boot in the class. Get your stuff over the rather pronounced boot lip and you'll find a 625 litre space on offer. That's 39 litres bigger than you get from a Volkswagen Passat, 83 litres bigger than a Ford Mondeo and a huge 135 litres bigger than a Vauxhall Insignia. The Superb Estate can take 660 litres. And bear in mind that on the Superb IV plug-in hybrid, boot capacity falls to 485 litres with the hatch and 510 litres with the Estate due to the batteries that live under the floor. But that's still better than the boot space you get from comparable D-segment plug-in models like the BMW 330e or the Ford Mondeo hybrid. It's a usable space too, with fixed and foldable hooks on the compartment sidewalls and an optional boot net programme to keep small items in place. 
It's a pity that a variable height boot floor costs extra, but we like the way that the parcel shelf can be slid behind the rear seats when you need it out of the way. And a brilliant little touch is this magnetic and removable LED flashlight on the left-hand side cargo wall that can be used for at least 24 hours and automatically recharges while the engine's running. A 12-volt socket sits on the right-hand cargo sidewall. And if you specify the optional retractable tow bar, this neat little catch in the loading lip activates it. There's no extra space beneath the boot floor, or at least there won't be if you've wisely paid the extra for this temporary spare wheel. A ski hatch can accommodate longer items. Annoyingly, though, you do have to pay extra if you want to activate the spring-loaded 60-40 split-folding seat backs with boot-mounted levers. And once everything's retracted, there's up to 1,760 litres of space. Unfortunately, the cargo floor isn't completely flat, but it can be if you choose the estate model, which offers up to 1,950 litres of space on demand. Now, providing you don't want leather upholstery and you don't opt for a really ritzy model, a fold-flat front passenger seat can be specified for the carriage of really long items. The superb value proposition is still strong, though not quite as strong as when we first tested this car back in 2015, when prices started from around £19,000. With this facelifted B8 series model, things kick off from just under £25,000 for this hatch version, and there's a premium of around £1,300 more for the alternative estate body style, that around half of superb buyers tend to want. The SEL trimmed variant we've chosen to test today marks the midpoint of the range. Lesser SE and S derivatives sit below it, or you can spend more and spoil yourself with the two trim levels that sit just above SEL, Sportline Plus and Plush Lorin and Clement, that top spec badging referencing the Skoda brand's founding fathers. Let's drill down into a bit of detail. Now, Skoda buyers tend to be more likely to want manual transmission than customers with other brands in this model's D segment. And if that's the case for you, your choice is going to be limited to the two volume 150 PS engines, the 1.5 TSI petrol and the new 2.0-litre TDI Evo series diesel. As you'd expect, for a little more, both these power plants can also be paired to Skoda's usual DSG auto gearbox, a seven-speeder, in this case for an extra payment of £1,400. Either way, the 1.5 TSI petrol unit offers a £1,265 price saving over the 2.0-litre 150 PS diesel, which makes it well worth considering as an alternative if your annual mileage isn't especially high. The other thing that superb buyers tend to prioritise a little more than those of other brands in this sector is running cost efficiency. And for folk of that sort, the checkmaker has two options to put to you with this car. One of them is the superb IV petrol electric plug-in hybrid model, a variant that Skoda rather ambitiously thinks will take around 30% of total superb sales, even though this powertrain is only available with the top three trim levels at hefty pricing in the 35 to £39,000 bracket, figures that these days there's no government assistance to slightly reduce. So you could find yourself instead looking at the kind of engine you might think would be more at home in the company's slightly smaller Octavio model, the little 1.6-litre TDI 120 PS diesel, which features exclusively with the two base trim levels and, little surprisingly, can only be had paired with DSG Auto Transmission. This, though, is these days a relatively old tech power plant, which is why its efficiency figures are now outshone by the 2-litre TDI 150 PS Evo unit. In the reasonably unlikely event that you're prepared to spend well over £30,000 on your Superb, you'll want to know that other more powerful petrol and diesel engines feature elsewhere in the range, all non-negotiably paired to 7-speed DSG auto transmission and all limited to the pricier upper-spec trim levels. They include a couple of 2.0-litre TSI petrol models, a front-driven one with 190 PS and a 4x4 version with 270 
172 PS. Or you could have the old tech 2 litre TDI 190 PS diesel unit we're trying here, which tends to be particularly favoured by the towing fraternity and is the only engine in the lineup that gives you a choice of either two wheel drive or four by four drivetrain formats. The extra traction of the latter requiring a premium of just over 1,500 pounds. In other countries, Skoda uses the 2 litre TDI 190 PS 4x4 powertrain package and the estate body style to create an SUV orientated superb Scout derivative with raised ride height that very effectively takes on cars like Audi's A6, All Road, and Volvo's V90 Cross Country. Unfortunately, there are no plans to offer that variant in our market. Talking of SUVs, in considering this superb, it might be difficult for you to ignore the similarly priced, similarly sized crossover models that will be sitting on the other side of your local Skoda dealer's showroom. A superb costs around the same as the Czech company's mid-sized SUV, the Karok, but offers a comfier ride, vastly more rear seat legroom, and in this hatch form, around 100 litres more boot space. If your comparison is with Skoda's largest SUV, the Kodiak, you'll probably be somewhat more likely to be considering a superb estate. The station wagon version of this superb could save you up to around a thousand pounds on an equivalently engined five seat Kodiak. And to be frank, for family buyers would make considerably more sense. But style, not sense, is what tends to drive sales in this part of the market these days, which is why SUVs are of much more importance to Skoda these days. But let's leave crossovers to the crossover crowd and consider the more natural conventional medium range Mondeo class D segment rivals this superb must face from other brands. Having mentioned the Mondeo, let's start with that. If you were looking at this superb in volume 2 litre TDI 150 PS guys, You'll find that Ford priced at around a thousand pound less, but it'll cost you considerably more to run and isn't as big inside. Two other really significant rivals threaten this superb in this class. One is Vauxhall's Insignia, which can be several thousand pounds cheaper, but offers cabin and boot size really more comparable to a Skoda Octavia than a Skoda Superb. And the Vauxhall can no longer be ordered as an estate. We'd be more likely to be considering this Czech contender's close cousin, the Volkswagen Passat, which shares all the same engineering you get here, but costs over £1,500 more when comparably specced. And you could boost that saving to around £2,500 if you were to consider this superb with the kind of base S trim level that Volkswagen doesn't offer. Bear in mind too that the Passat's alternative to an estate body style is a less versatile saloon body shape rather than the hatch you get here. Either way, you'll get more interior room in this Skoda. In fact, you'll get more interior room than would be found in any comparable D-segment medium range model you care to mention. The Mazda 6 certainly can't compete on that score, even though a volume diesel version would cost you £1,700 more than a comparable Superb, which is quite a lot extra to pay for the sweet handling of that Japanese model. A Peugeot 508 looks even less affordable than this Skoda. The base 508 engine, the 1.5 blue HDI 130 unit, costs well over £1,500 more than a base 2 litre TDI 150 Superb. And a more comparable 508, the 2 litre blue HDI 180 variant, will cost you well over £3,000 more than an equivalent version of this Skoda. And that's your lot if you want a direct D-segment rival to what's on offer here and don't want an SUV. Once upon a time, Hyundai, Kia, Renault, Citroen, Honda and Toyota all campaigned vigorously in this sector. Now they're all gone, thanks to the rise and rise of the ubiquitous crossover genre. If, having considered all of this, you conclude that it is a superb that you really want, then you're going to want to know just how generous Skoda's been with the standard spec. And the answer is that you get quite a lot. Even entry-level S variants come with 16-inch Orion 
alloy wheels, LED headlamps, front fog lights, LED rear lamps and alarm, and if you go for the estate version, black roof rails too. Standard across the range is the freely downloadable Care Connect app, via which you can remotely lock or unlock the doors and proactively arrange vehicle servicing. Inside an S variant, there's manual air conditioning, Bluetooth for your phone, a trip computer, and a decent quality DAB stereo system, accessed via an 8-inch Bolero color touchscreen with Skoda Smart Link, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, smartphone mirroring for full reflected smartphone functionality. So you can enjoy things like Spotify, Maps, podcasts, and online radio in car, all of it beamed through the infotainment display. The Bolero setup also gives you voice control along with aux in, USB and SD card connectivity. And there's a decent package of camera-driven safety kits. And we'll get to that in a moment. And useful, clever stuff too, like a removable LED flashlight in the boot, a cool glove box and an ice scraper in the fuel filler cap. Not so clever is the fact that a Space Saver spare wheel isn't included in the standard spec, only one of those fiddly tyre repair kits. Most superb buyers, though, are probably going to want to stretch further up the range, if only to get themselves a wider choice of engines. SE Spec, the next trim level up, comes with larger 17-inch Stratos wheels, dual-zone climate control, power folding mirrors, rain-sensing wipers, rear parking sensors, adaptive cruise control, and cornering front fog lights. Plus, the Bolero infotainment setup gets what the Czech brand calls in-car voice enhancement. We'll also mention that from SE level, you get lumbar support for the front seats, an auto dimming rear view mirror, and that almost unique Skoda touch, an umbrella built into the door. Beyond that, well, it's really a question of how far you want to go. We've opted for a mid-range SEL version here, and from this point on in the range, the Superb adopts a slightly more upmarket look, courtesy of visual features like a chrome strip between the rear lights, privacy glass, and full matrix LED headlamps with LED daytime running lights and dynamic scrolling indicators, plus cornering front fog lamps. SEL trim gets you 18-inch Zenith wheels and electrically operated tailgate, headlamp washers and keyless entry. Inside SEL spec entitles you to full leather upholstery with contrast white stitching and both heat and power adjustment for the memory foam front seats. Plus, there's a color multifunction trip computer and a drive mode selection system with normal, sport, eco and individual options. What also gets introduced as standard at SEL level is the much-enhanced Amundsen Center Dash infotainment screen with its built-in navigation, a package that many buyers of superb S or SE spec models tend to add in as an option. That's partly because its integrated Wi-Fi allows you to make a lot more use of that Skoda Connect app we mentioned earlier, and specifically its Wi-Fi enabled infotainment online package, a year's free use of which is included after purchase from this point on in the range. Once you've put in a sat-nav destination, infotainment online will brief you about things like petrol stations, parking places, points of interest, and for the plug-in model, charging stations along your route, as well as updating you on the latest news and weather. Want to go even further up the Superb range? Well, two more trim levels remain. For the few that want their Superb to have a really dynamic look, there's Sportline Plus trim, marked out by 19-inch Vega anthracite alloy wheels, a special rear exhaust diffuser, a spoiler for the hatch body style, gloss black roof rails for the estate, and on both Sportline Plus body shapes, further gloss black finishing for the front grille and the rear trim strip. Inside at this level, there's a sport steering wheel and diamond stitched black Alcantara sport seats with powered memory settings. There's also a 10 color LED interior light pack, a black roof headliner and carbon optic cabin trim inlays. 
A Sportline Plus Superb also gives you a couple of key tech elements that also feature with top Lorin and Clement spec, namely full matrix LED headlights, which generate a beam consisting of several segments, each of which are controlled individually, and an even larger center dash infotainment monitor, the 9.2 inch Columbus package, which comes with a DVD player, as well as gesture and voice control. L&K, or Lauren and Clement spec, is the only one in the range that includes a standard, the most significant cabin addition to this revised Superb, the 10.25-inch virtual cockpit digital instrument binnacle display. Other L&K features include special 18-inch Propus Aero anthracite alloy wheels, a heated windscreen, a boot net and a virtual pedal addition to the rear tailgate that enables you to open it with a wave of your foot beneath the bumper. At this level in the range, the steering wheel is heated and the leather, which has stitched branding, is cooled and ventilated at the front and can be ordered in either brown or beige as well as black. In the rear seat area, the upholstery is heated at this level and this tri-zone climate control that gives rear seat passengers their own air conditioning settings. And as an L and K buyer, you get a premium 10 speaker, 610 watt Canton audio system with a subwoofer, plus DCC, dynamic chassis control, adaptive damping, a rear view camera, and a park assist system that will automatically steer you into spaces. On to options. Now, some of the key things we've already mentioned, and if you've bought into the lineup at either S or SE level, you're quite likely to want to pay extra for the mid-range Amundsen infotainment package with its navigation and Wi-Fi features. With SEL trim, which as we said earlier, gets that monitor as standard, you might also want to pay more for the larger 9.2 inch Columbus center dash infotainment screen. Having that Columbus set up with SEL spec and with the two priciest trim levels means you've also the opportunity to pay the small amount extra that Skoda wants for its clever Media Command app, which allows passenger compatibility with the infotainment system, allowing rear occupants to control the whole setup with their tablets or smartphones. You might also like the idea of another screen facing you through the steering wheel, the virtual cockpit monitor we just mentioned, which is offered for an extra £465 on SEL and Sportline Plus superb versions, the latter variant featuring it with an extra sport display. Another desirable LNK feature you might want elsewhere in the range is the thumping 10 speaker Canton premium sound system, which is optional provided you avoid baseline trim. Away from media and infotainment, we think some superb buyers are going to want to look at features like tri-zone climate control, steering wheel paddles for the DSG Auto gearbox, and a sunroof, which can be of the big panoramic glass variety if you go for the estate. If you've chosen one of the more affordable specs, you might want to add keyless entry too. And bear in mind that with base S spec, you need to pay extra for crucial items like rear parking sensors and driver's seat lumbar support. Niceties like powered front seats, a heated steering wheel and heat for the rear seats are available further up the range if the variant you've chosen doesn't have them. And with this SEL trim, you could add in ventilated front seats and a 10 color LED package plus cabin ambient lighting system. Buyers of SEL and L&K models can pay extra to treat themselves to a driver's seat massaging system. What about driving stuff? Well, on an SE variant, you can pay extra for the full matrix LED headlights and the drive mode selection system. And talking of drive mode selection, you'll need this to be able to specify a feature that, if budget permitted, we'd really want on this car. DCC or dynamic chassis control adaptive damping, which is standard, as we said, with top L and K trim, but otherwise available as an option, providing you don't choose a base S spec model or the 1.6 TDI diesel engine. In its softest comfort mode, this really does enhance this Skoda's already excellent standards of ride. What else? Well, if you struggle with parking, there's the chance to add in the rear view camera and a park assist system we just mentioned. The superb IEV plug-in can also be had with an area view surround camera system too. If you've opted for the 2-litre TDI 190 4x4 variant and you'll be occasionally travelling over rough tracks, it'd be prudent to add in the optional rough road package, which includes an engine guard and an underbody stone guard. 
All season tyres are also available, though for some reason only with a 1.5 TSI petrol engine. Practical features you might want to add include a heated windscreen, heated windscreen washer nozzles, and the virtual pedal foot activation feature for the powered tailgate. Annoyingly, you'll need to pay extra for a temporary spare wheel too, though if you go for that, there's no opportunity to pay extra for an adjustable height boot floor. Textile floor mats are available, as are sun blinds for the rear side windows, and a neat waste bin that can fit in the door panel. You have to pay extra for rear backrest release levers in the boot, and providing you avoid leather upholstery and the three top trim levels, you can specify an unusual and very useful feature in this class, a fold-flat front passenger seat feature that will allow you to carry really long items like kayaks and surfboards inside the car. What else? Well, you can have a boot net and on an estate, a partition net screen to separate off the boot from the passenger area. Buyers of SE spec estate models can also pay extra for a retractable parcel shelf and a sliding trunk cover. Superb buyers regularly engaging in muddy outdoor pursuits might want to protect the cargo area with a plastic boot liner, a double-sided boot mat and a rear bumper protector. Towers will want the integrated retractable tow bar, which is activated by a neat catch in the boot lip. And if you go for the optional transverse roof rack, you'll be able to add a roof box available in silver, black or white. You can add a lockable bicycle holder for the roof and or add a bicycle holder that fits on top of the tow bar. An optional protection pack includes mud flaps along with a protective boot tray and the textile floor match mentioned earlier. A next base dash cam is also available. On to aesthetics. Now, unless you want your Superb in meteor grey or solid energy blue, you'll have to be paying your dealer extra for your choice of panel shade. There are various metallic and pearl effect colours. We've got black magic pearlescent here and various exclusive colours too, including some specifically for Sportline Plus trim. Across the range, there are various 17, 18 or 19 inch wheel options available to you if you don't like the rims fitted to your variant of choice. Here, for instance, this car has been upgraded to 19 inch Canopus alloys, though if this was our car, we'd stay clear of this largest 19 inch wheel size unless dynamic chassis control had been fitted. On to safety. Now, from launch, this third generation Superb design featured a front assist autonomous braking system fitted as standard across the range. One of those setups now common on family cars that scans the road ahead as you drive. If a potential collision hazard is detected, you'll be warned. And if you don't respond or aren't able to, the brakes will automatically be applied to decrease the severity of any resulting accident. For this revised B8 series model, this system has been enhanced with predictive pedestrian protection, which is more specifically able to identify people or cyclists who might be about to inadvertently step into your path. Avoid base S trim and you also get two other really useful safety touches. There's a driver fatigue sensor that will monitor your driving reactions for signs of drowsiness. If necessary, prompting you to stop for a restorative coffee. And the adaptive cruise control system that, as we said earlier, is standard from SE spec upwards, now incorporates a clever predictive cruise control feature which uses images from a windscreen camera along with navigation data to adjust the car's speed ahead of bends and speeds restrictions. Like most modern adaptive cruise control systems, this one in combination with auto transmission can also adapt speed to the vehicles ahead and in the event of a tailback, bring the car to a controlled stop and start it off again without driver input. All of this is in addition to all the more usual features that come fitted across the superb range which have helped to justify this car's five-star Euro NCAP safety test showing. There are seven airbags including two that run the length of the cabin at window level and one beneath the steering column to protect the driver's knees. You also get Isofix child seat fastenings on the rear bench. A further Isofix fastening for the front passenger seat is optional. And we like the inclusion of an automatic post-collision braking system that recognises when an impact's occurred and brakes the car to prevent it being uncontrollably propelled into oncoming traffic. 
There's also an XDS Plus electronic differential lock system, which is there to reduce understeer and give you more stability when cornering. Plus, it stops one driven wheel spinning faster than the other, as it might, for example, when powering away across wet leaves. For better driving stability, this revised Superb now uses a new electromechanical brake booster and aerodynamic covers on the rear axle suspension. It's also worth mentioning that one of the features of the Skoda Connect app we mentioned earlier is an emergency call or e-call system that in the event of an accident where the airbags are triggered will automatically alert the rescue services with your exact GPS location. Other conventional safety features include the normal ESC stability control and ASR traction control systems, plus MSR engine braking control that'll stop you skidding if you change down abruptly on a slippery surface. If you do get into a skid, a DSR steering assistance feature will help you steer out of it. And you get an ABS braking system further assisted by CBC or cornering brake control through the bends, plus an HBA or hydraulic braking assistant which helps reduce stopping time when you really slam on all the anchors in an emergency. Hill Start Assist to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions costs extra with manual gearbox models though. Want to go further? Well, from SEL spec upwards, there's also a side assist blind spot monitor, optional on an SE model, which will alert you if you're about to dangerously pull out into the path of another vehicle, monitoring the road behind you over a distance of up to 70 metres. Or you could have that technology packaged in as part of an optional lane assist and blind spot detection package. This uses alerts and automatic steering nudges to help you stay in lane on the highway and and on the move will warn you if you're pulling out to dangerously overtake in front of another car. The setup includes a rear traffic alert feature which warns you of oncoming vehicles if you're reversing out of a space and on DSG automatic gearbox models the technology in this package combines with the adaptive cruise control system that most superb models have to provide a traffic jam assist function that accelerates brakes and steers the car for you when you're queuing at slow speeds providing you keep your hands on the wheel. Other extra cost safety options include a light assist with high beam control feature that will automatically dip your headlights for you at night. And if you specify satellite navigation, you might add in a travel assist with traffic sign recognition element that pictures road signs as you pass and displays them on the dash. There's also an optional crew protection assist feature that comes with rear side airbags. This setup senses when an impact is inevitable and will instantly tighten the seat belts and close the windows to give you the best possible chance of surviving it. Even cleverer is the emergency assist setup which can take over driving duties completely should you become incapacitated, steering the car to the side of the road and bringing it to a safe and gradual stop. Skoda has forged its modern day reputation on building quality cars that aren't expensive to run and here's another one. Thanks to the stiff, sophisticated MQB platform, this third generation Superb adopted in 2015, the designers have been able to keep this flagship model's curb weight down to somewhere around the one and a half tonne mark and that in turn has meant that it isn't actually much more expensive to run than the next model down in the range, the Octavia. At the original launch of this B8 series Mark III model, the brand tried to tempt efficiency-minded buyers with a Green Line variant, which boosted the frugality of the base 1.6-litre diesel derivative with low rolling resistance tyres and special aerodynamic parts. These days, thankfully, the engineering which aims to improve the fuel and CO2 figures of this car is of the far more fundamental kind. And as you'd want, all the power plants now conform to the industry's most stringent Euro 6D Temp RDE Step 1 compliance standard. In this film, we've briefed you on the new 2 litre TDI 150 PS diesel engine's Evo series redesign, its new exhaust, turbo, fuel injection, and thermos management systems, all changes aimed at driving down running costs. The result sees a typical hatch superb model fitted with this engine and a DSG auto gearbox return up to 56.5 mpg on the combined WLTP schedule and up to 102 grams per kilometre of NEDC rated CO2. 
that's better even than the figures you'd get from the smaller 1.6 TDI diesel which with the DSG Auto Box returns up to 50.4 mpg and 110 grams per kilometre in hatch form. To beat the 2 litre Evo diesel's frugality in this Skoda you have to opt for the clever superb IV petrol plug-in hybrid. If you've viewed other sections of this film you'll know that this makes a 1.4 TSI petrol engine with an 85 kilowatt electric motor powered by a 13 kilowatt hour battery which when fully charged can provide up to 35 miles of all electric WLTP rated driving range. As a result it's quite likely that with a typical commute a superb IV owner would only need to actually visit a fuel station every month or two. Assuming you install the 3.6 kilowatt wall box charger in your garage the battery could be replenished from empty in three and a half hours. From an ordinary household plug the charging time figure rises to around five hours. The result of all this technology is a WLTP combined cycle fuel economy figure of up to 156.9 mpg and a super clean NEDC rated CO2 output of up to 39 grams per kilometer. These readings based around use of this variant's most frugal hybrid driving mode. As with any plug-in model, the official fuel return is a fantasy figure, but that impressive CO2 reading means a low VED band B and significant company car tax savings. A slight downside with this variant lies with the fact that the battery's positioning under the rear seat necessitates a reduction in fuel tank size from 66 to 50 litres, but even so, you should still be able to manage around 550 miles between refills. If you can't quite stretch to a superb IV and want to stick with petrol power, the version of this car you'll be considering is the 1.5 TSI. This unit hasn't been embellished with fashionable mild hybrid tech, but it does still feature active cylinder technology that under light throttle loads cuts off the second and third cylinders for greater efficiency. As a result, a manual gearbox superb 1.5 TSI hatch can deliver up to 43.5 mpg on the WLTP combined cycle and 120 grams per kilometre of NEDC rated CO2, a very reasonable showing for a car of this size. With a DSG Auto gearbox that likely owners of this derivative are probably more likely to want, the figures are 41.5 mpg and 123 grams per kilometre. Opt for any of the other engines on offer, all of which are mated to a DSG Auto gearbox, and your Superb will cost significantly more to run. As before, we'll give you figures for hatch models and use WLTP readings for fuel and NEDC cycle returns for CO2, since that's what most competitors most commonly tend to quote. Here we've been trying a 2 litre TDI 190 PS model, this the older non-Evo generation unit, which manages up to 48.7 mpg and 117 grams per kilometre, or up to 44.1 mpg and up to 129 grams per kilometre in 4x4 form. The alternative 2 litre TSI 190 PS petrol model manages up to 38.2 mpg and 139 grams per kilometre. And the top 2 litre TSI 272 PS 4x4 variant manages 33.2 mpg and 159 grams per kilometre. Across the range, the usual efficiency tweaks contribute to these figures. There's an energy recovery setup to reclaim energy that would otherwise be lost under braking or during cruising, and the usual start-stop system to cut the engine when you don't need it, stuck at the lights or waiting in traffic. With the diesels, you'll need to keep the 16.3 litre tank for the necessary Add Blue additive topped up to keep within sight of the quoted readings. Of course, the figures you'll achieve will depend to a great extent on how you drive, another area in which this Superb aims to assist you. If you've a variant with the drive mode selection setup, you'll have the option of an eco setting that'll tweak all of the car systems for ultimate frugality. All models get a useful drive green section of the centre dash infotainment system which has a fuel graph showing consumption over the last 30 minutes of use and awards a green score for your ongoing prowess in terms of driving smoothness 
careful use of speed and efficient braking. That same screen can show the efficiency impact of convenience consumer items like air conditioning. And you can access various fuel saving tips, though to be honest we wouldn't bother because most of the given advice is either blindingly obvious, like think ahead when driving, or somewhat problematic for a typical owner's lifestyle, like avoid short trips. You'll more commonly be referencing the driving data section of this central display, which shows average fuel consumption, driving range, and your current green score. If you've opted for a superb variant fitted with the virtual cockpit instrument binnacle screen, much of this information can be brought right into your line of vision. And when you power off, the screen will helpfully show you the average consumption figure for the journey you've just made, as well as the average speed, the distance travelled and the driving time. What else? Well, this car should be straightforward to maintain with a choice of fixed mileage or flexible servicing regimes, depending on whether the annual distance you cover is short or long. And you can budget ahead for maintenance costs by taking out a fixed price prepaid servicing plan at point of purchase that covers the first two scheduled garage visits. Prices start at around £500 for a year or 30,000 miles servicing package. Residuals, of course, are crucial, and according to independent experts, CAP, these will be considerably better than the class average. After the usual industry standard three year or 60,000 mile ownership period, the organisation reckons this car will be worth 48% of its original purchase price. To give you some class perspective on that, Cap puts the Ford Mondeo on 43% and pitches other rival models like Vauxhall's Insignia and the Mazda 6 at around just 39%. On to insurance. Uh, for a diesel super model, you're looking at Group 14E for the entry level 1.6 TDI and a grouping of between 18E and 22E for the 2 litre TDI 150 PS variant, depending on the trim level you select. The 2 litre TDI 190 PS engine we've been trying here attracts a grouping of either 26E or 27E. On to petrol power. Now, the base 1.5 TSI attracts a rating of between 17E and 21E, depending on trim. For the Superb IV plug-in hybrid, it's either 26E or 27E. For the 2.0-litre TSI 190 PS model, it's also 26E to 27E. And for the top 2.0-litre TSI 272 PS 4x4 variant, it's Group 31E. Finally, while it's certainly true that other rivals better the three-year 60,000-mile warranty that Skoda provides, you can extend your cover to four or five years by paying extra. A five-year, 100,000-mile extension will cost £650. Not that you really need to spend more for warranty peace of mind. The superb regularly tops independent consumer satisfaction surveys. According to real people, there are a few more satisfying cars to own. In a market increasingly dominated by SUVs, it's often tempting to wonder whether there's really still a place for a conventional D-segment Mondeo class model like this. And even if you were set on choosing a Skoda, why wouldn't you buy a Karok or a Kodiak for this sort of money? To continue to justify its place in the range, this improved Superb had to offer a more credible answer to that question. And by and large, it has. We're disappointed that the Czech brand hasn't given it the mild hybrid tech you now get in other VW Group models like the Audi A4. And the Superb still won't really satisfy the very few people who come to this class in search of dynamic handling. But otherwise, there's much to like here, not least the kind of exterior elegance that fits in as comfortably at a high-class hotel as it does on a taxi rank. Yes, there are other quite compelling choices in the segment if you don't want an SUV. A Vauxhall Insignia is better value, a Mazda 6 is sharper to drive, and a Volkswagen Passat is a touch more polished. No other rival, though, in our view at least, does a better job of combining all these virtues into one appealing package.
Above all, the Superb delivers space, and that's a quality you can never really have too much of in this corner of the market. Why? Well, because it's the one attribute where more mainstream marks can really land a telling blow on the premium badges. Something like a BMW 3 Series or an Audi A4 is always going to feel more cramped inside than a Skoda Superb. Cars like those are just not remotely viable if you need a lot of family interior room. And even more directly competing Mondeos, Insignias and Passats can't match the size of this Czech contender's cabin and boot. The advantage of the superb estate in that latter respect being particularly notable. In terms of rear passenger space, you'd have to spend vastly more to find anything else comparable. This then remains a convincing flagship for Skoda's increasingly impressive model lineup, offering real luxury in an everyday accessible package. It's now safer, slicker, and particularly in plug in form, more technically advanced too. Or to put it another way, it is, to use Skoda's words, simply clever.